This is Rob Jackson with Fandroid.com, and you're watching a review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. When first looking at the Note 3, you should note three things, pun intended there. First, the 5.7-inch display is huge and gorgeous. Super AMOLED, full HD display, 396 pixels per inch density, and displays 16 million colors. Second, the stylus is central to all Note devices, including the Note 3. When you first pull it out, it will wake up the screen and give you some quick stylus options. And thirdly, Samsung's replaced that plastic exterior with a faux leather back. It's also plastic, but it replicates a more classy style of one of those traditional day planners. Even has that stitching and everything in it. Let's take a quick look around the device. On the top, you've got that ambient light sensor, an LED notification light, and the 2 megapixel front-facing camera. The sensors are used to do some pretty cool things, such as waking up the screen without touching it for a quick notification view, but most of these sensory features won't find their way into your daily routine. On the top of the phone, you've got an IR blaster, noise canceling mic, and 3.5mm headset jack. On the left, you've got the volume rocker, nothing else. And the bottom of the device gets interesting with a micro USB 3.0 port. This is the first time we're seeing it. What it does is transfers data quicker and will also charge your device quicker. Don't worry, your old micro USB connectors will still work. Uh, the newer ones have a larger connection, but you can see there it works just fine. And to the right on the bottom, you've got the stylus, which we showed you before. Uh, and there's also a voice canceling mic on the bottom there, to the left of the micro USB port. On the right, we've got the power button and a little groove that helps you pull out that plastic faux leather back. And it peels off pretty easily. Just to prove that it's plastic, let's give it a, yeah, that's plastic. Underneath the case, we've got that 3200 milliamp hour battery. You can also see a slot for a SIM card and a micro SD card up to 64 gigabytes. That's in addition to either 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of onboard memory, depending on what model you get. But the real star under the hood is the processor and the RAM. This thing runs a 2.3 gigahertz quad core processor it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800, and it's got 3 gigabytes of RAM. That's a record never done before on a mobile phone and hugely powerful, and you can tell. And on the back, we've got a 13 megapixel camera with LED flash. It records in full 1080p HD, takes huge images. I was actually expecting a little more out of the photo results, but overall the camera's pretty good. Before we jump into the software, there are two things I want you to do. First of all, sign up for AndroidForums.com and go to the Galaxy Note 3 forums. This phone has so much going on that you're going to have questions. There's tons of people there that are glad to help. Second of all, in the settings, know that there is a search feature in the settings of the Note 3. There's so many different settings, it's easy to get lost, but you can search for something. So if you're looking to change a voice setting, search for voice and see what settings it pulls up. That can be a lifesaver and really help you out when you've got a question. Let's talk about some of the newest and most helpful features of the Galaxy Note 3. First is one called Air Command. You can see when you first pull the stylus up, it automatically pops up with these five quick options. The newly designed stylus has a button on it now, and if you put your stylus very close to the screen and press this button, you can access the air command from anywhere on the phone, no matter what app or screen you're on. And in this example here, you can see that you don't have to be touching the screen. Actually, you don't want to be touching the screen. You can see the space there between my screen and the actual stylus. Let's talk a little bit about each of these air command features. You've got action memo, scrapbooker, screen write, S finder, and then pen window. I'd consider action memo basically like a post-it note on steroids. You can pop it open, jot down a note, a name, a phone number, and then sometimes you can actually automate different features based on what content you put in. So for example, if I've got a name and a phone number, I can save it. But then I can jump back into Action Memo, look at all my memos, and then jump into one, and you'll see this little icon up here lets me take action on that text. So I tried to save it as a contact, and I'm going to save it to the device. And you can see it automatically reads my handwriting and plops that number into my contacts. One feature I like about this is when you make a note, you can actually minimize it, and then it becomes this little short icon, which really acts as a post-it note. So say I want to call mom, don't want to forget, I leave it minimized on my screen, and it's like an icon that's sitting there reminding me to call mom. And I called her, love you mom. Then you've got Scrapbooker, which is a much more media-rich 
version of note taking that allows you to save websites or maps or things from apps and store them in kind of a digital scrapbook that allows you to keep track of things and categorize them. For example, here I am on TripAdvisor looking up things to do in Austin, Texas, because I'm headed there soon, and maybe I find something that I want to do. This skydiving stuff looks pretty cool, so why don't I use digital scrapbook using air command, circle it, and you can see it saves the title, saves the URL with a little picture, and then I'm allowed to attach a note to it. Do this on October 14th. And cool, now I won't forget. I can refer back to it. I've got the information there. Good to go. I'm going to save this into, uh, in, or I'm going to save it into a category called trips and tag it with trip ideas. Here's another example, and this time I'm using Google Maps. Uh, with Scrapbooker and say I want to save this park here, Patterson Park, because I don't want to forget about it and say there's a, a league going on, uh, a cornhole league, uh, and I got information on it. I might want to remind myself that where it is, uh, what the contact information is to sign up. So I quickly jot down this information and I have it stored in my Note 3 now. Of course, you can open up the Scrapbooker app and see the different scrapbooks that you've kept and refer back to them and they're categorized and all that for easy reference. My favorite air command feature by far is ScreenWrite, which allows you no matter where you are, what app or browsing the web or anywhere to use air command and then get a screen cap of whatever you're looking at and then jot notes on the screen and provide references. So here I am just drawing on the desktop and asking if someone's downloaded this app. Then of course you can save it, share it, do whatever you want with it. I can see myself using this feature all the time, whether I'm in the Fandroid News app and spot a bug or a typo, or I spot something on another website that I think one of our bloggers should pay attention to or someone somebody should contact. I can see myself oftentimes just doing a quick screen cap, writing a note on there to explain why I did the screen cap, send it off in an email, and uh, I can see myself personally using that a lot. I know that a lot of different people have different professions and could probably apply the same concept to their job to increase productivity. Uh, not only that, but there are a lot of fun ways you can use it uh, as well, just in sharing interesting things you find in the web or on apps or funny stuff. So screen right is definitely my favorite air command feature. Then you've got S Finder, which it pretty much enables you to search your entire phone, whether that be the scrapbooks and action memos you've created using the stylus or your apps and emails and contacts and stuff like that. It's kind of like a universal search, which could definitely be helpful. Lastly, we've got pen window, which allows you to draw a rectangle somewhere on your screen and it uh, overlays tools such as calculators, whatever you want, and you can kind of hover and move that tool around on the screen and resize it um, over top of whatever you're doing. A couple things I'm not crazy about with Air Command. Uh, first of all, I'd like to see Action Memo and Scrapbooker combined into one. It's kind of, can, when do I use one, when do I use the other? Um, if they made it the UI slick enough, I think that you could combine those and it'd be a little bit less confusing. Uh, pen window, I don't see why you have to draw a rectangle. You should just put, put, say where you want it to go on the screen. And I also think that the multi-window, multitasking feature um, is much better than this kind of multiple hovering screen things. Um, so I would almost just opt to get rid of uh, the hovering windows and suggest people use multi-window, which is probably my favorite feature on the Note 3, and we'll show you that now. First, make sure multi windows enabled. Go up to settings. That should be a quick option, and you can just tap it on. You'll know that it's on because there'll be a little tab on the left side there, and that's multi window right there. If you hold down on that little tab, you can move the location up, down, left, right, where the multi window is docked. I prefer to keep it on the lower left. So let's check it out in action. And keep in mind, multi window only works with supported apps so anything that's in this left column though is supported chrome one of them so you could be browsing the web and say you want to do something while you're browsing or maybe you want to refer to 
a web page while you're emailing somebody. So you open up that multi-window, hold down on the email, drag it to either the top or the bottom, and now you've got this split pane. So you can read your email or compose an email while you're referring to the text below. Hold down that blue dot in the middle, drag it, and you can change how much screen real estate each of those panes gets. It was fun to play with different combinations of panes. Uh, one enjoyable one was YouTube on the top while I was Googling around and surfing the web on the bottom. And then my personal favorite where I'm browsing the web while doing a Google Hangout video call. Hey, what's going on, man? I might just chilling. Awesome. So I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the Fells Point Fun Festival for next weekend as we're talking. So maybe you're planning a trip together or you're discussing a work email. This allows you to have a video call and get a lot more personal while multitasking. I found it really useful, really fun, really entertaining and engaging. So uh, this is my favorite setup of my favorite feature on the Galaxy Note 3. The last brand spanking new feature of the Note 3 we're going to discuss is called My Magazine, which you access by pulling up on the bottom of the screen when you're anywhere on any home screen. And this is made in partnership with Flipboard. You can see it's a very Flipboard-like experience. We've got news. We've got personal. There's a screenshot of Steve. There's Ali's birthday. So stuff that's going on from my information and accounts here and now, which accesses my GPS location in addition to some settings that I've um, created. And then social, which right now is pulling from my Google Plus account. A lot of this stuff is customizable too. For example, you can choose what news topics you want to see in that feed, choose which social accounts you use, set your location, a lot of different stuff that make this experience enjoyable. I kept forgetting my magazine was there to be honest, but once I drilled it into my head, I found myself using it more often. It's pretty convenient and just a fun way to browse and kill time um, when you're in line at the store, or on the bus or whatever. Uh, and Flipboard does a really nice job integrating the content beautifully. So, for example, watch this video and a very seamless experience, not to mention a very nice sack. So that's a handful of the most important features of the Note 3, but there are so many features on the Note 3 that are custom, action menu, group play, which lets you put a bunch of different uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, devices together to play them like they're one screen, Knox, which is a security feature, My Files, you've got the pen up, S it's just s -trans it's crazy. This would be a 24-hour review if we actually went over all the Note 3 features. So it may be overwhelming, don't get overwhelmed. Use Android Forms as a research. Take your time. Spend one full day to get used to the device, using the help menus, exploring everything the Note 3 has to offer. And in the long run, over the next year or two years that you own the device, it'll make you a really, really happy customer. So uh, don't be afraid to dive in and just be patient. A quick note on some brand new camera settings. Most of the time you're gonna to wanna to use auto. Um, animated photo is tough to do, but can be very helpful, so check that out. Golf is a new one, not sure how often that'll get used. Rich tone, when there isn't a lot of vibrant colors and contrast, using auto, try that out, it's a pretty good one. Surround shot is just like Photosphere in many ways from the Nexus and works really well. Now this is how the photo looks when you look at it through the gallery, all messed up. But if you click the globe in that upper left hand corner, you can actually view it as a you know 3D sphere as it's meant to be seen. And you get the panning automatically, but put your finger on it and pan around, and you get an awesome, awesome photo sphere. Which very cool and glad to see they added this. And here are some of the pictures taken with the Galaxy Note 3 in my gallery 
And these will be in the article as well on fandroid.com, so check that out so you can see the original picture. Uh, there's the video I took, sample video. Hey folks, Rob Jackson with fandroid.com. One last thing we've got to talk about before we conclude the video portion of our review is the size. This is the Droid Razor Max HD 4.7 inch screen. That's already huge and look how the Note 3 dwarfs it. Take a look at the iPhone 5C next to it which is a 4 inch screen. And remember the original Samsung Galaxy S was 4 inches and it, this device can pretty much swallow it whole. It's absolutely crazy. A lot of people will say it's too big. I could never hold that. I'll look foolish talking on the phone with it. It won't fit in my pocket and to each of their own. But I would really suggest that you give it a try. Uh, I thought the same thing, but after using it for a day, I warmed up to it. And after using it for a while now, uh, I may be getting one myself. So uh, you get used to the size for sure. For our verdict and more details, read our full review at fandroid.com and also stay tuned for our Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition of review and our Samsung Galaxy Gear Android smartwatch review, which will be coming in the coming days.